You know how all y'all wanted a Mario Kart maker? Here it is. Okay, Thrill Racer, your first wheels. Hey there, Feeny. I hope you're ready to burn some rubber because this time we're going to be making Thrill Racer. First, overhead, okay. That's a, that's a good idea. Yes, car. Mm, yes, car. I want a big car. Oh, it's a small car. Dang, it's a compact. Call up a button. Okay, button note on. Uh, let's go Y. Button. Now connect the button note on to the car note on's accelerate port. Okay. Uh, accelerate. Steering stick. Uh, stick. Steering wheel. Yes, I can open the settings. Thank you. Movement speed to point. No! They're making me go slow! It's gonna drive right off the screen, yeah. We have a solution for this. We want the camera to be placed behind the car. Spin the note on around. Wait. Place this way. Camera note on. Okay. Uh, camera. Mystery room, we used a fixed camera angle. But here, we can have the camera follow the car around. Just like we did with the game screen note on and Risky Run, the camera note on can be connected to the other... Oh, okay, okay. Camera to car. We'll need to open the camera note on settings. Camera field of view 260. But I like the 90. Track characters Y rotation. Offset distance from 2.5... Oh God, 0.5 and three. Perfect. Now we have a camera that follows the car around. It's, it's following too close. It's following too close. But dang, look at this. Beep, beep. <laughs> See how the camera's nicely positioned behind the car? No. <laughs> Try driving the car! Car and camera together at last. Good stuff, good stuff. We got the car to move forward and we can steer left and right, but we can't move backward. Sometimes you just have to go in reverse, even in a racing game. Let me tell you a secret about Carnodon's accelerate port. You can use a negative number to break in reverse. We're gonna make it possible to move in reverse with B. Oh, okay. Let's get the B button. Okay. What should we do? Subtraction. We're going to arrange the value of the two button note on so that B is subtracted from Y. So pressing Y will give an output of one and pressing B will give an output of negative one. Oh, okay, okay, calculate. Okay, link the button note on to input one. And this one to two. Delete the connection between the car and the button. That's it for pro, wow, that's it? Wait, that's it? Child's even got reverse lights. By the by, what do you think of the car's design? Pretty cool, right? I can just imagine those big chunky tires blazing through the sand. While we're on the subject, how about we make the world look like a desert? Okay, I got you. I got you. World, oh, world, world appearance to sand. Look at it's a beach. It's not even any sand. It's a beach. In the next step, we're going to be making the finish line and an opponent. Number two, start with the finish line. This will be a bit of a trek. Okay, okay. Objects, simple box, visible only. Okay. Y size 2.1. Y position 2.0. The finish line is finished, except it's just a plain old line across the ground. If we want to check whether the cars cross the. Oh, I know how to do this! Touch, 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 touch. Touch sensor, invisible. Check car. But what if I wanna, I wanna check the hippo too! If all we're doing is checking, not much is going to happen. You're right. Party poppers pop. Yo, I can, I can do that. Effects. Uh, I think that's under special, yeah. Special effects. And then party popper. <laughs> All right, so once the car touches the sensor, the party poppers will party pop. Chat, look, there's our, there's our finish line. I didn't even cross it. All right, copy the car. Beep, beep. 
I don't want to be the red car. I want to be, I don't know, a white car or maybe like a, a lime green car. This one will be blue. Movement. What? This was... They're ma we're making this one slower? Literally cheating. Wow, look at that car, chat. Isn't it a beaut? There's just one problem. Our light blue buddy won't budge an inch. Look at that. See, look, he moved. Cross the line! Cross the line! He won! We did it! Now, the enemy car won't be controlled by a human player. We'll have to program it to drive all by itself. Probably need to use a constant. But that constant will connect to the accelerate port of the car node on. Just imagine a car with the accelerator pedal pressed down the whole time. Input the constant. Link it to the accelerate port. Uh, drive! Drive like the wind! Let's watch it drive chat. Ah! It's cheating! Second place! Yo, look at it go! Alright, we should allow players to retry the game after someone reaches the finish line. Timer, 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 timer! Retry game. There we go. I'm gonna win this time! <laughs> I won! Step two is finito. See you in the next step. All right, finding the winner. Now we've got the touch sensor at the finish line already checking for cars and it'll react as soon as either car touches it. Let's give it an upgrade so that we can tell the difference between the players and the opponent's cars. The next set of instructions could be a tad tricky so you wanna pay careful attention. This will be on the test. Start by calling up a fancy object node on Joy-Con right. Fancy object note on will be what tells the cars apart. Okay, okay. The Joy-Con tells the cars apart. Shrink it down. Now link it. Settings. Connection point to center. And Can you target it? also to center. Movable only. Okay, invisible. Linking an invisible fancy object is the tricky technique I wanted to teach you. What's so tricky about it? Seemed really easy. But we've still got a long road ahead of- Ah! You see what they did, chat? A long road ahead. Ah, ha, ha. Would you mind opening the touch sensor note on settings? Enable. Okay. Check what uh, Joy-Con are. Oh! Oh, it won't let me. It won't let me close without unchecking car. That means instead of looking for cars, the touch sensor note on is now checking for a Joy-Con R fancy object. Oh, okay. We'll let our opponent win. Ah, uh, sucker! Watch, I'm gonna go in. Maximum cheating. We need to make a hidden fancy for our opponent's car. Select the fancy object. Copy. Settings. Appearance. Left Joy-Con. And over here. And we'll attach it. Now we have a hidden fancy connected to the opponent's car. And it's different than the one connected to the player. Let's head over to the finish line. Nice. Here, we'll be making the effect for when your opponent crosses the finish line. Copy the touch sensor. Okay. And move it slightly off to the side. This little tip should make things easier to connect things. Settings. Enable only Joy-Con L. Call up the effect of the failure. Uh-oh. Special effects failure. We haven't seen this one yet. Now the failure effect will play when our opponent crosses the finish line. Really captures the feeling of disappointment, doesn't it? Yeah. But as things are now, if both cars arrive at the finish line at almost the same time, the party popper and the failure effects are going to go off at the same time. We won't be able to work out who actually won. We'll tackle this part in two stages. What happens when we win and what happens when we lose. Since this could get confusing, it'll be easier if we add comments. <gasps> comments! <gasps> oh, this is dangerous. Okay, this is where the comment note on comes in. Okay, let's enter a comment now. Chat, this is gonna be a big comment. Finished entering your comment, it should say something like win. You know, subscribing to twitch.tv slash the dragonfini is a win. Unlike the very capable text object note on, I'm afraid I don't display anything on the game screen. In fact, unlike the others, I don't really do much of anything at all. Look at that. Two, two comments? Something along the lines of lose, okay. 
So we'll be using this area to program the winning behavior and this one for the losing behavior. When we talk about winning and losing, what we really mean is who makes it to the finish first, the player or the opponent? Let's add a couple of flag node on. So, okay, okay. We'll use one that switches on when the player gets to the end and the other that switches on when the opponent gets to the end. Flag node on. We'll call up another one, flag. W. W. Yo, look at this winner. What does the player finishing first really mean? It means that the player reached the finish line and the opponent didn't. So we need to check for those two things at the same time. Yo, let's let's get our boy and logic. And we'll want to connect the and node on to the on port of the flag node on. All right. Okay, player finishing first. I can check for that. Yo, let's get our wormhole, buddy. Wormhole. Now, let's link the wormhole entrance node onto the adjacent flag node on. All right. We'll get wormhole exit. Put it in the blue frame. Next, we call up a not node on. Yo, I love the not node on. Not. <laughs> Yo, I would love to connect those. The not node on will output the opposite of whatever you put in. So it's going to output when the opponent is not at the finish. Okay, okay, not and. The player reached a finish and the opponent has not. When these two conditions are satisfied, our flag node on friend will wake up. We'll move the party popper. Nice. Flag to trigger. Nice. So with you, yes, it all it's all here. It's all in this comment. Next, we'll work on getting the flag node on to turn on when the opponent finishes first. This next part is going to be an exact mirror of the last one. So it won't be too difficult. Okay. Top flag. Okay. And the bottom flag. Look at that. Oh! Beautiful, chat. Beautiful. Okay, let's lose. Failure effect is working. The finish line. Oh, I, we gotta win. I wanna know what happens in a tie. Okay. That's good. That's good. Listen, I know this step may have dragged out. No, it was good. It was good. It was a good lesson. In the next step, we're going to be working on the race course. I want to make baby park. All right. I want to make baby park. Okay. Properties visible and solid. You may want to copy me a bunch. Could save yourself a ton of effort. Look at this box. This box is back seating up. There, the left wall is complete. Copy the topmost object node on. Okay. We'll copy this one too. Okay, we'll put that over here. Over here. Uh, we'll rotate it and we'll put it. Wow. Put it here. Nice. Nice. That guy's gonna lose. Watch. Look at. He's stuck. He's stuck. Look at that. Look at our course. Oh god, he's not stuck! <laughs> he's not stuck! Time to check step four off the list. Dude, step four was so easy. Step four to 3,000. Actually, it's only out of eight. It's only eight steps in this one. If you really want to impress your friends, you can tell them that you're programming a fully autonomous driving AI chat! Since the star of today shows our opponent, tracking them with a camera will make it much easier for us to see what's going on. Connect it over to the opponent's car. Good, the camera's chugging along right behind them. Wow, they're doing so great. We also get a good view of the inevitable accidents. We need to make it turn right automatically at the first bend. We're gonna make sure that it turns right whenever it sees a wall ahead. Touch sensor! Destroying sensor. Size will be four. Connection point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's join up, all right. We also want to connect the touch sensor to the steering wheel port. Ah, so this this is how Tesla does it, chat. So now if there's a wall in the way, the car will turn right when the touch sensor hits it. Oh no! Oh no! Oh! So after that turn, we need to turn left, don't we? Yeah. But before that, we should make it easier to tell exactly when the touch sensor is reacting to something. Call up a number object node on. Okay. Visible and movable. Whole number digits. Y should be minus four. All right. 
Now link it. Oh my god, this car. This car. Touch sensor note onto the number. Okay. Uh, touch sensor to the number. Now we can see the number that the touch sensor note on puts on the game screen. Oh. We cannot tell the exact moment that the touch sensor saw it. Remember though, we're only using this number object note on to make the programming process easier. Now it's finally time to make the car turn left and right automatically. In order to do that, we have to attach not one, but two touch sensors to the front of the car. Sensor for turning right goes on the front left and one for turning left goes on the front right. Oh wow, look at this one. This one's got a picture to go with it. We'll have to change the connection of the current touch sensor note on and move it to the left. Okay, move it there. Now sphere object, simple sphere. This one and that one to the car. Let's open the touch sensor node on settings. Uh, wrong one and that one. Link it to this, to our spherical friend. And just like that, we place the sensor for turning right on the front left of the car. Ah, there's the box. It's doing so good. Now we'll work on getting the car to turn left. Copy, settings, connection point, we'll swap these. Okay, now link it to the sphere. It's interesting that it's linked to the sphere, which is linked to the car. If we want to turn left, we'll have to input a negative number into the steering wheel port. Okay, or old pal calculator. Dude, I love calculator. Let's go, buddy. You go right here. Erase this connection. Connect the touch sensor on the left to input port one. Connect the touch sensor on the right to input two. Finish up, connect it. Oh my God, to the steering wheel. And that's done. You've really actually programmed a self-turning car. I lost, crap. I made that chat, look at that. I made this. Let's go, number six. Yo, who's that speedy boy over there that we're gonna be using? Today we're gonna be raising the suspense at the start line. How do we do that? By implementing a countdown sequence. We want the countdown to start when the game begins. That means we'll need a note on that tells us when the game has started. For this, we have the on start note on. Oh, hello. A new one, input. State change. Oh, that's who Speedy Boy is. The on star note on only ever outputs a signal when the game has begun. After that, their job is pretty much done. All right, we need an effect note on and we need a countdown. Let's use the timer note on to give us a quick breather before the countdown starts for real. Let's get our timer buddy out. Connect the on start note on and the timer note on, yes. Yo, child, look at that countdown. I made that. But did you notice the problem? Yeah, somebody got a head start. What a cheater. What a cheater. The effect note on has a three second count on it. So we should have a three second pause here too. Another timer note on. Dude, they're so salty though. Three. Two timer note ons. A flag note on, all right. Put it to the side, link the timer note on's output to the, okay, okay, uh, on. Wake me up when the countdown's over, okay. I'll be using the flag note on's output for a whole bunch of things, actually. Best if we link it to a wormhole. Oh, wormhole! Next on our play is getting the cars to stay still until the countdown is over. We'll tackle the player player's car for, I cannot speak today. <laughs> okay, we need to stop all input signals to the accelerate port up until the countdown finishes. We'll get our exit boy here. The signal isn't being output, that effectively means the number is zero. Multiply that with the number going into the accelerate port. And then we can stop a signal going into the port until countdown ends. Multiplication, oh my God, who is this? Input one, link the subtraction one with the multiplication one. Oh, that's why we put it over here. Now connect the multiplication to the car's accelerate port. Now, no matter how hard you try, the accelerator just won't budge until the countdown ends. Let's check it. No, they're still cheating! Ah! It works, Chad, it works! Look at that, look at that dirt. You know what, whatever, heck that guy. I can beat him even though he's cheating. 
We can get rid of the constant nodon now. Instead, call up a wormhole exit nodon. Okay, we'll set this one. Okay, so there's two C exits. There's two C exits. Is it gonna work? Let's find out. It works! It works! Chat, we're racing! They're doing it! They're doing it! All right, crafty teleporting. I think it's already feeling like a real racing game, but we can polish it even more by adding a little secret. Secret! We'll be making a teleport shortcut behind the starting line. Anyone who knows it's there can just zip to the goal in no time flat. It's the ultimate cheat. It's invisible now. Okay, teleport, uh, car. Okay, we'll call up a hoop. Fancy ramp. Other, Oops. just visible. Y position 2.6, 2. 2. X axis. We'll check out the other end of the teleport now. Why are we putting it here, not at the end? Invisible, and that's it for a secret. Okay. We don't, we don't need to cheat. We can already beat the computer. Just like Ready Player One. Oh my God, that movie was not great. Next time we'll be applying the finishing touches. You'll be able to add some of your own personal flair to it. Yes! I'm letting you take the reins on a couple of things here, Feeny. Namely, the game's appearance and background music. What a game! Because the neon, everything's in neon. You know what this means, right? Thrill Racer is done. Thrill Racer is done. Feels good to be a speed demon. Let's go. This is the Mario Kart maker that you've all been asking for. It's my game chat. I made that. Mario Kart. This one, this one's impressive. You guys are gonna like this one. Mario Kart. Ah! One. <laughs> Two. We got three. I don't know how many laps we have to do. I win! That was really cool. That was really cool. It just, it ends. We won. Okay, this is GTA 5 Garage Edition V1.1. <laughs> Receive. All right. Collect the five treasure chests. All right, that's cool. That's cool. B is accelerate. Left stick. Is that... Chat, we can jump. Wait, was that a person on the roof? <laughs> Switch! <laughs> oh no, chat! Look at this giant robot. Car wash. A bubble! Oh my god. This is amazing! <laughs> I, made, I made it through the ring! There's a treasure up there. Sorry, guys! Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at an apple. Secret. Oh, I won. Yo, we beat the game. We beat the game. This is this is the furthest I can zoom out. Holy crap. Look at they even have like brick tiles and everything. Where are the wormholes? Why, sir, what, did you learn about the wormholes? 